Hi friends, welcome back to the channel. If you are new here, my name is Yvonne and you are on Ginger Chick Rehab, where I love to take thrift store finds and make them over here on the channel and share the process and my vision with you all of what I do to these items. The first thing I'm making over today is this metal tin wall decor piece. So there's something that you always see in a thrift store. They kind of come and go and some are colored, some are metal, some have wood. But I thought I would share an idea for them. So I'm in love right now with Sweet Pickens Milk Paint. So I want to go ahead and protect the back of this little metal plaque so that when the paint drips, it doesn't make a mess of the back. Now that we've got that all done, I'm gonna go ahead and now get it cleaned up. I taped off first, just so the tape sticks a little bit better in case it's wet back there. And so I'm just gonna get it all clean, wipe it off, and then get a towel and try to dry it off. You, Yeah, you don't wanna paint a wet surface. It doesn't adhere very well. So I've been having a lot of fun using Sweet Pickens Milk Paint. So what it is, it's equal parts, so the dry powder, and water so I just mix the two together and then you mix it for two minutes until it gets kind of like a pancake batter consistency and then you just let it sit for another couple minutes until it kind of thickens up and then it is ready to use so the nice thing about this kind of paint is it's really made for I think for a one coat coverage because as it dries, it crackles. So it's not uniform crackles. It may crackle here and there. It may crackle nowhere. It's just that unexpected. You don't know what you're going to get. So as you see, I'm just putting a lot on my brush and then I'm just kind of more of moving it around than brushing it on. And I don't mind if any of the underneath color is showing right now it it doesn't really matter it's just supposed to be look like old chippy aged paint they said you don't know what it's going to do <laughs> why it's drying i think every surface you put it on is a little bit different so this one just got tiny little cracks here and there but i love it i i really am having a lot of fun with this milk paint so now i'm just going to take some 220 sandpaper and i'm just going to distress the detail areas a little bit more really give it some age Take my air compressor, I'll blow that sandy dust out of those little crevice parts, and then I will get this sealed in with some clear wax. It's hard to tell from afar the cute little crackles that are underneath there with that metal showing through, but wait for the close-ups. another thing that seems to be pretty common in the, my area anyway thrift stores are samplers or framed artwork that you're just you're just not your taste or your style and you if you're like me you kind of just watch it sit there and you're like oh wow well, you know is it because of the frame is it because what's in the frame but y'all we can change the frame colors so I'm just sharing this because I know not everybody has that same like oh, well, I never thought about that kind of attitude, you know. So, yep, I'm just going to go ahead and tape off the fabric on here, and we are going to give it a quick new paint color. And black just seems to go with everything, so I'm just going to use some of the coal black from Fusion. And, yes, this is a quick flip because Fusion paint has primer, paint, and top coat all in one. And the nice thing about black is usually it's a one coat coverage. Amazing what just a color change can do to an item. It just brings out all that detail, all that beautiful craftsmanship of the sampler. So now I'm just adding a little bit of distressing to give it a little bit of age to go with that fabric color. Okay, one more quick frame makeover. 
Okay, well, two is a pair. But my gosh, look at those primitive prints. They are absolutely gorgeous. And the glass, I wish you had feel vision if you could tell, it is like a satin. It is just, you can tell that they were high end, but the frames, there again, they it doesn't do anything for that artwork. So I'm going to go ahead and pop that artwork out. Look at it. It's, it, it's just a print. It's not, it doesn't seem to be anything fancy, but it is just, I love primitive. So that vibe is just getting on me. For my next makeover is this little scalloped, cute little metal stand. It is just so little and so super cute. It just is kind of blah with that gray color. So let's use Sweetie Jane's Milk Paint to transform it into something amazing. As I said earlier in the video, I am loving on the milk paint. So it's equal parts of like one scoop of powder to one scoop of water and then you mix 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 for two minutes and then you let it sit for like another minute or two and it'll thicken up and it'll be like a pancake batter consistency so and the fun thing about this is it's unpredictable you don't know sometimes it'll make cracks sometimes it'll just cover and paint so we will just get it on and we'll see what it does I don't want to overwork it wherever it's spotty I just let it be spotty so since it's really a one coat coverage I think it just turns out amazing so it really gives that aged um, effect so I'm just taking some 220 sandpaper I'm just going to make sure that everything and it smooths down with sandpaper really easily and I just it's just a neat texture and now I'll just get it sealed in with some clear varathane natural wax this will just, I, I can't even explain to you how smooth, after you sand it, how smooth the paint feels. So now it's time to kick it up a notch and let's get to the good stuff. So now I have this primitive wooden handmade clock. The mechanism does not work. Oh, you just never know. So, but you can replace the mechanism. I find that Hobby Lobby for this type of mechanism seems to be the cheapest. So they're under six bucks. So all I have to do is just unscrew part by part and um, get this taken off. I can replace the mechanism till I have it all painted up. I just wanted to show you what it looked like. For the rest of this video, I am going to be using IOD's new summer line, and I'm going to be doing some transfers out of the seed catalog. Are these not just gorgeous? Gorgeous. I've shared in the past, the hard thing about a transfer, any type of stamp or an inlay is finding an item to use it on. You always think that you have to have that exact size of item. Not always, not always. So I'm going to go ahead and pick out what I want to use first. That way I can match up what paint color I'm going to be painting this clock. I believe that the seed will fit on just on the face of that clock. Well, not the face, but the 
for of the clock anyway. And then I think Fran French eggshell from Fusion matches it beautifully. So first is that detailed area. Um, the clock face itself is paper, so I don't want to tape off on that because I don't want the tape to pull the face off. Um, I already had to replace the mechanism, so I don't necessarily want to have to replace a face of a clock. So I just need to go in very gingerly and cut in there as close as I can. All that use fusion paint have a favorite color. I, I don't know. There's so many that I've been trying lately that I, I don't know if I have a favorite quite yet. I just think every item just calls for a different color and it's just fun. I do think French eggshell is a very beautiful color. So let me know down in the comments below. Do you, have you found that favorite color or do you like to change it up like I have been doing? fusion colors you're lucky enough like the black to maybe have a one coat coverage but most of the time it's a two coat coverage but that second coat just goes on just amazingly it's like the first coat is there and then it attracts that second coat to just really get on there so now that my second coat is dry and yes I did do the back y'all in case you were wondering um I'm gonna go ahead with some sandpaper and I just wanted to stress it and I don't mind if that burgundy comes through at all. I want some of the wood to come through, but some of the burgundy will match that transfer that I'm going to be using on this. And I realized that m most of that inner flower I'm not going to be using because that's where the clock face is, but my main focus was the wording of the seed. So um, I'm just going to gingerly kind of eyeball it. I'm trying not to press that transfer. I probably shouldn't be doing this. I probably should have. But I need to get a visual of where I need to cut a couple pieces off here and there. You have not used a transfer before you just keep rubbing they send a rubbing tool with it and you can tell when it starts to get on the item that you're trying to put it on um, because it will go from being clear to being cloudy and so I'm just working around that circle part and if I don't rub on the circle part it'll kind of tear away the transfer will tear away so I don't have to cut it too awful much but I need to relieve the pressure of that heavy paper, the plastic paper on the top. Absolutely love how that wrapped around the other side and this was my plan for the other piece that I cut off to fill up the other side so I'm just trying to get as much of the wording in there as I possibly can and now I'm gonna go ahead and take a little bit of steel wool I don't mind if it takes a little bit off it gives it more of that aged look but I want to make sure that everything is nice and smooth before taking some Verithane natural clear wax and sealing it in I just need to replace the mechanism and on the back of the package of the mechanism it'll tell you how to put your pieces and parts and the pieces and parts are meant to be loose not meant to be tight so this project has totally been transformed.
after taking a peek at that seed catalog, I'm like, I have this little bench and it's burgundy. And I think it just needs to be cleaned up. And I think some of those transfers will look amazing on this. Nope, not all transformations include painting the item. Uh, it is well painted, but I like to give it a little bit of age. I can really see brush strokes and whatnot on it. And then whatever has stuck to that top coat needs to be sanded off. So I'm just taking some 220 sandpaper and that, yes, this is what I'm going to be doing to this. I'm just going to be sanding it until I think it's pretty. Okay, I think it's pretty. Okay, well, it needs a little bit of cleaning. But yes, just distressing it, getting the brush strokes taken off, making it smooth, and whatever was stuck to the top coat, I don't know. It wasn't something that would just necessarily wipe off. But it has a much smoother paint job now. All these florals in this catalog, I mean, right on the front, you can tell they match this burgundy that it's colored. So unfortunately, there isn't any that, like, completely fits if I turned them sideways but that's kind of weird on a little stool like this so we're just going to play around my first one's going to be offset in the center so see how it would take that wording I can cut the wording off but I think the wording is what gives it so much character so now I'm looking for um just some others that I could add in there some pieces and parts I could add in there you know, so sometimes you're just like, okay, I'm just going to go for it. And then I'll fill in the blanks when I've got this one done. I'll feel like you overthink a project. I know that I do that sometimes. And sometimes when I just let, I'm like, okay, just do it. Just do it. Stop overthinking every little thing that you're going to do. It's the perfectly imperfect of flipping a thrifted find. So make that decision. If I would have took off the wording, it probably would have looked just fine. But I want to fill the whole thing. I, and the wording is what attracts me. It just reminds me of how that they would, you know, use seed packets to add details to stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this one in half. And I'm still going to use the wording that on there and have those florals going in towards it. It's still that beautiful color that matches what this little stool was already painted wool just comes in handy because it makes it nice and flat but I need to add a little bit more like the edges but I don't want to take sandpaper I don't want to rip that transfer and then I'm going to go ahead and there's a little bit left from my first project on those other coordinating you know the other corners that aren't covered and I'm going to fill in from there I love how this is turning out My last project of this video is going to be this cute little box. Oh, I love wood stuff because it's just so easy to transform. But I need to um, get rid of that old crackle paint that's on the front of this along with that apple. So since this is such a small area, I think I can just go in with my hand and hand sand it with some 150 sandpaper. Just a little bit stronger sandpaper to get rid of that crackle. I guess I didn't know I was so strong. Actually, I, it probably wasn't as I'm working on it. It looks like it was just hot glued in, which we all know is, you know, if you want to take hot glue off, you can. It's a nice temporary, um, but yeah, anyway, but that's okay because that'll make it easier for me to sand. 
And then even though the box doesn't have any top coat on it, I'm going to go ahead and give it a nice little scuff sanding. And that'll just help it accept the paint a little bit better. I'm pretty sure that I have a knob in my stash that I can replace this wooden knob with. So I'm going to go ahead and remove it. I probably should have checked this out first to see which one was going to fit. So I think this wording will be perfect. I love that that um, neutral of the flowers on this one. And even though the chocolate fusion paint doesn't isn't quite an exact match, it's just a nice hue that'll play and actually bring out more brown. But for the front of it, I'm just going to do the cashmere color, which is a nice soft beige, because I want that transfer to be able to pop and like i said so it came apart actually it's easier to paint Now that I have that on the front cover, I'm going to go ahead and give a little distressing to the box. This is just going to take out any of those brush strokes that I may have had because I used kind of a small brush. Um, but it, it's just going to smooth it and add that little bit of distressing to tie the wood features of this box that I left. I'm going to use a combination of the CA Star Bond glue for a quick hold. And then for more of a permanent hold, I'm going to add some tight bond glue. go ahead and replace the knob out with this cute little porcelain. I know it is not an exact match because the paint color was more of a beige, but it still goes with that older theme that I was looking for. watch today's video yes you know simple frames you know I share that because not always everybody has that vision for making over a frame they're, they you know they might see it in the thrift store I'm like oh I don't like that color I don't like you know just something simple to add in that somebody may not think of and then let's jump into the IOD seed catalog oh my goodness the hardest thing about transfers or stamps or any of those things are finding the items that fit on them. So sometimes you have to cut them apart and make them like the clock, make them, oh, and matching the colors, the fusion paint colors. Oh my, ah, I just absolutely love how that little clock. And yes, Hobby Lobby I find has like the cheapest, most cost efficient, most cost efficient um, replacements for clocks. So $6 isn't usually bad. Sometimes I don't know if they ever go on sale because I think it's like that $5.99 and under when they go on sale. So, but still $6 is, you know, it's, yeah, yeah, I know, I know it's all your final cost. But anyway, I just absolutely loved, I love those old timey labels anyway. And then the little box um, and the stool and they just kept adding to the stool. You know, it was one of those things that, you know, does it fit? It doesn't fit. Do it sideways. But I need a little bit more in each corner. So I just kept adding to it, cutting out flowers, using the excess that was left from the other that I used to begin with. Absolutely love it. And it was almost like that little 
brownish cream transfer was just made for that little box. So give me a quick comment down below which of the items I made over today in today's video were your favorite and have I inspired you to look at thrift store finds in a new way. And as always, if you're part of our YouTube family, thank you so much. And for those of you who have taken the time to hop over, check out Kristen Yvonne, The Journey, GCR, The Journey, <laughs> the behind the scenes of buying a new house, um, setting up a new workshop, just the behind the scenes of what it takes to do a YouTube channel. If you are interested, I'm doing vlogs like that just to show you the process of it all. And it is short little videos, a lot in them. <laughs> you just never know what I might show that day. So thanks again for watching today's video. And as always, if you're part of our YouTube family, thank you. And if you're new and you're checking out our channel for the first time and you liked what you saw, please hit that subscription button along with the notification bell so you know you've uploaded a new video. And we will see you next time, guys, and you can see what we're up to. Bye! Bye.